What's up, guys? Yes. Welcome to Peach Basement Extras. We got a whole bunch of shit to talk about that we didn't get to in episode 30. I think it was 35 this week. I actually have lost track. I've had a lot of work. Do you actually count? We do count. We since do count. Time. Since always. Since always. Steve since is the right OCD, now. man. All right. We count. No. Do you count? No, I don't count. Okay, that's But since I have started <laughs> editing, I sort of count. But then I forget what the fuck I did beforehand. <laughs> What'd you do like four hours ago? I was in work. What'd you do in work? Nothing, really. Okay. It was a mercifully quiet Monday. No one's going to be watching this from Nate's work. Not at all. <laughs> mercifully quiet Monday. Guys, we got a bunch of shit to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, Death of Wolverine Weapon X. We got the Spider-Verse, Amazing Spider-Man 9, and Ooh. Spider-Verse team-up. We got American Legends, Thanos Annual, Zoo Hunters, mm -hmm. Penny Dora and the Wishing Box, Dead Island... Ghost when Fleet, you time to read all these? Rasputin, Last Born Issue 2, Fiction Squad Issue 2, and Critical Hit Issue 2. We got God Killer Issue 1, and maybe even a few others that we might throw the fuck in that I haven't even mentioned here. Who the hell knows? It's going to be a crazy day. Anything goes, it's Pete's Basement Extras. It depends on how Pete drunk Pete gets. How drunk drunk Pete yeah, gets. That, 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 that. Yeah. We can just still go with drunk Pete and how drunk drunk Pete actually gets. Mm-hmm. How much drink of a drunk Pete drunk of a drink Pete? Did drunk. Don't try. Yeah. I want you to <laughs> I want you to revisit this after <laughs> taking some time to actually write that down. Yeah. Because I like where you're going with it. I like right. the start. Yeah, yeah. You've That's... got something there. <laughs> Death of Wolverine, Weapon X. Is anybody still reading this? Uh, it's actually not so bad as far really? as, as far as Requiem for Dead superheroes go. It's way better than Captain America. Yes, I know, yes. but they're yeah. milking this like. Yeah, yeah, right. Of course they're gonna milk it. Of course they're gonna milk it. Wolverine, what are you new? No, I did. <laughs> Wolverine's oh, come on. <laughs> Wolverine has had one claw in every faction of the Marvel universe since. But remember, he's a loner. <laughs> This one, you actually It's like the get fellas meet, bike, everybody's uh, had a ride. The, um, the dude that he fought at the end of Death of Wolverine, the yeah. dude Sharp, who was in the mask and everything, is actually, is, looks like he's a clone of, of Wolverine somehow. Right, yeah. I'm surprised he looks just Marvel? like Clone? No. Never. What did you say? It's where you say that with a straight face. It's not Spider-Man, so I'm, exactly. like, I'm, I'm definitely okay <laughs> with it. I'm not. Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna say that because it's not Spider-Man, he might, yeah. might okay. be open. And basically, this is looking at like all of those people lying on the experiment tables when Wolverine broke into mm -hmm. the the Weapon X lab. This is their story. Mm. <clears throat> what I did like is when they went to escape from the Weapon X facility, Wolverine was still on, on the roof, roof yeah. encased in adamantium, mm -hmm. had not moved yet. <laughs> that and, was good. And the building collapsed. And the building collapsed. Along right. right. That will be glossed over completely. Yeah, oh, totally. And until later on, it's found by some scientists. Or maybe, right. maybe Apocalypse come and resurrect them again. And lo and behold, the again. adamantium shell is empty. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, not a bad read, though. No, not at all. No, I, so, I enjoyed it. Surprisingly, I, like, I don't hate I, these Death of Wolverine Aftermaths. No. How much was the book? Uh, I don't know, three dollars, I guess. How many books have they, have they been putting out now? Like, what, two every week? Right. Yeah. On top of, like, what? There was two Spider-Mans last week. I'm glad you brought On that up, of... actually. Uh, this was something that we brought up in the main show that I want to bring up again, and I want to get your opinion on. Go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, 2015, Marvel has issued a lot of solicitations of this whole Secret Wars, <sighs> Battle World, all these different crazy cockamamie things going on that a lot of people are thinking this is some kind of reboot. reboot. Right. Yep. Yep. It didn't work for DC, it's not going to work for you guys, stop your shit is all I'm fucking telling you. Nevertheless, I like you said, $3 a fucking book is pretty pricey. What was it? Spidey's up to $4 a book. Most right. Marvel books now are $4 a book. But see, now, I collect Spidey, so I'm going to buy those. Yeah. But, like, these Death of Wolverine books, these, you know, throwaways that, like, a Thanos annual that I want to read, but I don't fucking need, and maybe I'm going to get a dollar or two tops selling it on eBay. Mm -hmm. Marvel is offering $10 a month subscription service on Comixology where you can download unlimited Marvel books. Now, New releases? anything you want. From old shit to new shit, this really seems worth it to just have on your computer or on your iPad or whatever where you can read these books that you want to read for $10. $10 is less than Do you would spend them on a or phone. Is it just like, a, like no, you, you read it? No, you got it. them. It's yours. That's it? Yeah, it's yours. That's worth it. 
I really think yeah. so. Ten dollars, that's worth it. To read all of these books that you want to know what's going on with your favorite characters. Because it's getting to a point, like, all right, dude, I picked up my stash last week at Midtown, mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. over a hundred bucks. Right. And I was like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, I could pull a hundred dollars in a week. Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. And it's just, it's, it's getting to a point where I'm sitting there, I'm looking at books, I'm like, shit, which one can I drop now? Right. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can now yeah. drop all the Marvel books that you don't care about not collecting. Yeah. Which I honestly, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's I not have, a bad I've idea. downloaded the Comixology app before. I don't really use it a lot because I am adverse to new things. I, I resist change and technology kind of scares me. You're looking at a guy who took it took him 20 minutes to hook up his sound bar to the Blu-ray player because I didn't realize that the plug had a cap on it. 20 minutes. Folks, it's no a cap card. Translation I was so bastard. 20 minutes. I'm sitting there like... What What's the, the definition fuck? of insanity? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't doing the same exact thing. I was changing the direction of the plug, you know, like a USB port. You got to turn it the other way, then you realize you were right the first time, but it just didn't go in. Yeah. Oh, same way. That, that sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go right to Spider-Verse, speaking of Marvel. Ah, how fucking awesome is this you book? You had to clean yourself after reading that oh, book. Oh, man. I was already naked oh. reading it, so I didn't oh, have to. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Oh my oh, god, dude. God, I, I thought not... I had a headache before. Okay, I was, I, honest to God, I was afraid of where, you know, I mean, like, it's one of those things, it's building, it's building, it's building, mm -hmm. and I'm like, it, it can't be this good, it can't be this good, and then that first issue came out, and it was like, oh my Holy god. Holy shit, it god. is this good. Yeah, I cannot wait for next issue. You saw that, what the, that last page for the for that to cover the next issue. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see their interaction. It's good. And honestly, it's about fucking time. Where are they going to go with this? Is this when, like, is Ock going to actually know that this is after And this him? is why when Ock... Because you and I said, Ock gave up being Spidey way too fucking easy. Right. So is this one of those things where he kind of, like... This is when I have to give it back to Peter. Yeah, I know what I got to do. Right. And this is it. Or is this just us kind of sitting there as fans going like, I gotta make some fucking sense of this? <laughs> it could be. It could be. And that's okay in my mind. As long as, if I can do it in my own head, I'm okay with it. Like, how do you feel about them adjusting the focus from this guy, Karn, who had kind of started the whole spider yeah. slaying thing, to, all to now it's not only sure. all of them, but mostly Moreland. And Karn is this now wild card. And we Verna. haven't seen it in a couple of issues. Verna, okay. the, the chick. I think I'm saying her name right, but yeah, yeah, whatever. The, the chick one. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm cool with it. I mean, like, look, Morlin was Do you think they're going to turn Karn yeah. to their side? The spiders, that is. I don't know. I don't think so, but, I mean, that would be an interesting little twist to it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they're going to have to do something because, I mean, Pete died friggin' getting, uh, what's it called? Going up against Marlin the first time, right? Right. And I mean, like it was—he got his ass handed to him. Now, granted, you got a shit ton of spiders, but the spiders getting picked off. If they're one on one, yeah. they're done. Right. Hands down. Yeah. And they, the these best guys they've been doing, powerful. even two on one. And I was gonna say the best they've been doing. It's like the fucking agents in in the Matrix. You right. That's agent, exactly what they are. You, you run. run. Yeah. Right. You don't fight them. You run. run. Yeah. So I mean, it. it that, that's, I mean, that's how are they gonna, point. how are they gonna fucking go about this? That's my question. I'm hoping, because there's always ramifications out of an event. I'm hoping, once some, um, going back to Doc Ock, he realizes that, wait, Peter Parker's back in Peter Parker's body. He's like, oh, this shit's gonna happen in the future, so I need to do something. And after this, we have back um, Peter Parker, Doc Ock somehow. Mm. Like a comb or a nano made body like he did before, remember? I wouldn't be surprised. Like a nano control thing, and that would be like. Like a turn him into Arnim Zola, too? I, I miss fucking Spider Rock. I'm kind of with you on that. He was, I, like, I love having Peter. Yeah. But having like more stories with Spider Rock? Yeah, because he was fine. He was doing really great in the city, just some little hiccups. Mm -hmm. Like the little spider robots and shit were doing brilliant. It's just, you know, Goblin. And they ended it, it was you know Goblin that fucked it up. You know what's being kind of sort of glossed over? And, you know, I hate to bring over the whole time travel thing, but this is all still happening within the 24 hours that he went through Brady, Grady, Brady, Grady yep. fucking's time machine. Yep. yep. Back in that one issue. Yep. This is all happening then. Mm -hmm. Yep. Crazy. Watch Doctor Who. No, I can't. <laughs> no, it's too much. You gotta. No, I watch too much TV as it is. I can't get involved in Love the TARDIS, Pete. Love it. I, this is fucking so worth your time, 
and all of the team ups, like the side stories. I love Spider Ham. Yeah, he's yeah. awesome. He's great. I like him, but why does he have eyes on his fucking nose? Why should he? those are his nostrils? I know, but they're like fucking eyeballs. The same. It's the same as it's just because it's, it's a, a cartoon. Hurts me. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here with a walking cartoon. cartoon. He's like, okay. you want to make something of it? It was cool. <laughs> I don't remember him being that spunky. No, I don't remember it at all. But, but it's I'm great. great. Yeah. Turn him into Howard the Duck. Well, he, he's, he's like, like yeah. 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 He's just a fucking sarcastic asshole. Oh, I love it. Love it. Oh, oh and the other really thing going back. Um, I love. I actually have to say, I like how they're working in the other back end of this. Yeah. You know, it's like, I thought that and was And all of a sudden, this is like some blessed thing. This is like having bacon with your meal for these inheritor guys. Yeah. Uh, hey, see what I did there? Yeah. <laughs> it's like going to Peter Lucas and getting a thick cut bacon. He's like, oh, it's the other. Uh, <laughs> right I mean, I was. You got that, you got that towel that you have? He might need it. I mean, have you had the bacon at Peter Lucas? No. I'm sitting next to him, too, man. Uh huh. Good birthday. I'm glad I'm sitting over here. I got the easy <laughs> escape route. You're fucked. Like the size of your, it's as thick as your fucking thumb. Where's that thumb? It's amazing. Oh my god, not as thick as your thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to be a girl that you would like, fuck. I mean, fuck, <laughs> man, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> that's, that's gonna fucking hurt. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Thanos Annual, bro, I know you read this. Well, I didn't read it yet. What did you think? It's, it's a recap. It's a recap? You know, of what? Of what? Of his life. Get the fuck out of here. Again? Yeah. It's, it's, How many times are you going to fucking do this? When he had the gauntlet, he was like, God. He's the man. Yes. So he, he, he like, like spider Dog. He, he went back in time to make sure everything goes in order for shit. He talks to his past self. Look, to see the new nifty toy, you're gonna get it later on, so on and so forth. His old, his younger self tries to steal. It was that holy. S he saves his younger self from death. Yeah, and shit. there's a bunch of shit. He shows him, you know, um, eternity, infinity. He shows him the whole grand scheme of shit that's gonna happen in the future, and it pretty much announces that there's gonna be a mini series coming out this summer. Right. Uh -huh. Well, we got a couple of mini series. We got Thanos versus Hulk coming out in a couple of weeks. Yes, I, I'm looking forward to. That's McGinnis, I think. Like, As he, it should be. I, I, yeah. At the very least, he did like yeah. ass, if, uh, if fucking you want somebody to draw for that, it. it should be McGinnis. No, you know who actually I would love to see draw that? And I keep saying this, and I've said this a number of times on it. John I'm, Romita Jr. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, just, I just like to fuck with him. No. <laughs> so mean. Why do you say that to the poor guy? I mean, he doesn't do it. I really don't know, think he does anything in comics anymore, except like now that the Infinity Gauntlet's been kind of picking up Stone? again. Ron Lim. Oh, Ron, like, Ron, remember Ron Lim's Hulk mm -hmm. back during the Infinity Gauntlet? That was pretty, he drew a nice Hulk. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but my first experience with Thanos was was Ron Lim's, so oh, actually, I shouldn't say, George Perez's version. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, but, like, Ron, uh, Ron Lim's version was, like, pretty much at the same time. So, mm -hmm. he does, like, he does Silver Surfer like nobody. And yeah. then he does Thanos. Like, that was a great a series Thanos. that is often glossed over, man. The old Silver Surfer shit. Yeah. 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 Those first, like, 60 issues. Right? Yep. After exactly. that, Remember that of... cover with Silver Surfer 50 with Thanos in the yeah. background? Like, yeah. That was dynamic. And Do you know how many times I bought that fucking book? Because I yeah. buy it, I sell it, I buy it, I sell it. I, I, I don't even like... know if I have it upstairs in the box. I, I, I actually point. still have my bucks. copy, and that's just a great precursor. And that's one of those that, like, you don't yeah. even know if, like, you've got the first print or not, because they're all, like, almost exactly the same with the very second, minuscule difference. The second print has a black outline. Ah. Whereas the first print has no outline to it. It was imposed and everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so kinda, what you're so saying is no, no dice. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. much was a book then? Well, it's an bucks. annual. It's probably four or five four. bucks. Yeah. So it's all right. So five bucks for a fucking a recap. So there you yeah, go. Fuck There's out fucking here. half of your uh, Marvel comics out. There anybody. we go. Yeah. That's for anybody who wasn't familiar with Thanos. But you know, yeah, seasoned veterans like us. Wikipedia. You know, well, uh, hey, awesome. you know. Uh, news worldwide. Nerds worldwide. Nerds, yeah. Nerds worldwide. Fucking sorry. They were bastards. Yeah, it's a Monday. I've been here too long. Thomas, I'm sorry, you can't read. Who do you think are the three most overrated characters in comic books? Overrated. Wolverine, mm -hmm. Dead, without Deadpool, I would say and Batman. And I love all three of them. I love my Deadpool, but yeah, he is all over the fucking place. Wolverine, we are talking about before, all over the fucking place. Yeah. I will be the first one to say, Batman can beat a lot of motherfuckers with enough planning. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, you got these guys that are just on his fucking dick 
way too much. <laughs> and you cannot beat a dude that can throw you into the sun. I'm sorry. Speaking of Kryptonite or no Kryptonite, you are not right. being Superman. One of the most oh, my overrated character list is Superman, and Kelly's gonna kill me for this. But Superman is fucking overrated. Once again, that whole throw you into the sun thing. Peter but Parker. Leave. How Leave. There's the door. What? He, how long has he been out of out of commission? He's only just gotten back a couple Peter of months. Parker has seen defend yourself. Peter Parker yourself. Peter Parker is super. You realize you got three Peter fans, yeah, Peter yeah. Parker fans, yeah. and two yeah. of them are here. You got two Peters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said, Peter. Wait a minute. You got two dicks and a dick. How the fuck does this happen? Exactly. Three dicks. Oh my god! It literally is a sausage fest. Except for the current storyline, what was last time? Peter Parker was like, damn, that's a good book. Can I just segue with, can you imagine how fucking annoying it is to grow up Spider-Man. on a name that is synonymous with the word penis in one way, shape, or form? Mm. And then and then on top of that, to be called a dork while you're growing up, too, because a dork is actually a six-foot whale penis. Did not know that. That's actually, that's actually news. Yeah. Uh, you right. get a star. You do. <laughs> You get a black star for that because that's pretty dark. <laughs> Go on. I mean, I think Spider Island, Dying Wish. Dying Wish? Back in black. When was this? When was it though? I don't know. Spider Island was like five years ago. I think Spider Island was a blitz. No, it was like five years ago. I think by now. Probably. Spider Island was a blitz. Together. In the current storyline of Spider Man, and his legacy has been okay. carrying him more than anything. <clears throat> Same thing with Superman. I wouldn't necessarily call that overrated, though. I call that badly fucking written. And that's why he's not the shit anymore. He's overrated right now. Right now, he, it's just his title carrying him. Okay, you're right. I, I see your point. That's why. I buy it because it's Spider-Man. Yeah, we're biased. Like, I'm biased. Okay. You and I will buy it if they just shit on a page and just kind of like... And draw a little two little eyes on yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sure. Just to be fair, my third overrated character is Thor. Really? How is he used properly? Is he the baddest motherfucking comic books? No. I would. But throw some him. nigga fucking whispered in his ear and he can't carry a fucking hammer anymore. He's supposed to be Marvel Superman and then some. Really? When was the last time he looked Superman-ish? She got bitched. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has. Oh, Overrated. Yes. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of hype behind him, but no actual. Well, they, that's the that's the amazing thing I've. I've always seen, and a lot of my favorite characters, the two of them being Cyclops and the Silver Surfer, like we just mentioned, two of my favorite characters in the Marvel Universe, both of them, well, Cyclops until recently, both of them have been very badly written and poorly written, where they hold way too much back. Yeah. So they don't get creative, right especially with the Silver yeah, Surfer, they don't get creative. Oh, themselves. God, yes. He is so under fucking news. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to be a badass. They came out with that Silver Surfer book that was just fucking horrendous. He got yeah, like a human lot, girlfriend like, and shit. All red is bad. I, I, just, all red. I pick up everything. I pick up. Silver no. Surfer is fucking an awesome character. You're absolutely right. He's completely underused. He's underrated, if yes, anything. Like, he's just I mean, fucking... You make Guardian of the Galaxy, he's cool. He's a bunch of rejects. He's on the Annihilators, you and you have not touched this... that fucking team. That team is begging for some good shit. Good nope, shit. not touching it. Shit, man. I'm throwing Iron Man on that. Yes. As an overrated character. As an overrated character. Ever since the movies yeah. have come out, everybody's been all over him, and it's just like... Oh, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is fucking awesome. You know, no, he is, yeah. but... And that's why. He, he's jigging again. But now he's being... RDJ or Iron Man? Uh, Iron Man. Tony Stark and the Goblins? Uh-huh. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, that's right, because uh, yeah, the, the whole Avengers book. shit, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. He gave everybody an app that made them beautiful. Something like that. He's fucking around with something by extremist app. Right. Mm. He's out in San Francisco because everybody's going out west now. Sure, why not? Yeah. Right. DC hey, Marvel's started. expanding, bro. Yeah. Is what it is. So he's, yeah, he's, yeah. Oh. Well, they had that train wreck that was on uh, the west coast for a number of years. Why the fuck not do it again? It'll happen. That book's coming out. Soon. Does anybody remember the Great Lakes Avengers? Oh, no, unfortunately. Wow. That was an awesome issue. Though. No. Or like two issues. No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you want to go the new Fantastic Four now? That was those were wow. fucking awesome. You know, I want to go back. I ha don't have those issues anymore. I Why? Really want? I don't know. Fucking years and years of collecting, they just kind of get lost somehow. If Marvel gets like that's that, that's like the ultimate team up at this point of the fucking movie studio. Yeah. We get Wolverine, Spider Man, Ghost Rider. Fucking Marvel has Ghost Rider and the Hulk. Yeah. We're halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> we're living on a prayer, bro. 
bro, yeah. at this point. Was it the new def- what, motherfucker? What? Yeah. I am a perfectly heterosexual male. I love Bon Jovi. He is the only good thing to come out of New Jersey. Don't fucking walk away from me. Bon Jovi is awesome. I grew up. Did you grew up in the fucking eighties? You had long hair, motherfucker. Still, what the fuck? You still do. See. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no, no Bon Jovi. Ah, you're ridiculous. What is up with zoo hunters, bro? Uh, you won't look pleased. I want to give Aspen a try. I always do. But they're Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> they. The word ass is in their name. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, it's just. I, I, I don't know. I. They, what's they, wrong with it? They tend to really. I mean. They try to get super, like super creative with the whole concept thing. And you were always a big Aspen like Top Cow fan. Oh yeah, well you know the Michael Turner stuff, the Witchblade Fathom stuff, right? Which is amazing. Soulfire, Soulfire, awesome. Far. You know, um, but Fathom unfortunately, unfortunately yeah. seriously, yeah, yeah, they still. Who's reading that? Three people in Queens. <laughs> That's like Shadowhawk. <laughs> even I've stopped reading. Yeah, okay, even he said it. Even he said it to you. <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're that one guy. guy. <laughs> I told Jim, I was like, yo, man, I, I love Shadow Hope back in the day. He's like, oh, you were the one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, but even even I kind of, I mean, because I had to stop collecting all together for, you know, unfortunate reasons. But, um, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're, they're trying a lot of cool stuff. And the artwork is always, is always, always on yeah. point. You're it's right. always on point. You know um, the stories, but they can they can be very much hit or miss. Mm-hmm. But even when they hit, they they just don't have they just don't have the uh, support behind them. There's nothing to commit to. That's the big thing I would like say. Ongoing. Right. They never they never do ongoings. It's all the last two shit they had was series. Lady Mechanica. Dan, what the fuck happened to that? The guy that owns it. Joe Benitez was doing that shit. Piece. Where the fuck he go? And he went somewhere with it. Where that somewhere is at, I don't fuck. Obviously, know. it ain't nowhere because he ain't printing no shit. But I would have read it if it came out from another label. I'm reading. That shit was awesome. Lola XOXO, and it's it's okay. And right. Zoo Hunts is about you know, just father son team that looks like that, that the son looks like a girl. I'm sorry, he does. I had like, wait, you sure it's him? Is it some fucking typo? What's the matter with the long hair? <laughs> no, that's that like manga shit. He, he, like he, 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 no, he he's, he is drawn rather effeminately, which uh-huh. is interesting. Um, so kind of like the guy from Stargate? Kind of. So the weird. fact that I remember that is really scary because I've I've only seen that movie twice. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Years and years and years ago. It's, anyway, it's, it's okay. um, but um, what the, is it even the about? The thing that the thing. Okay, this the father is an interstellar zoo hunter, which means he's actually Stargate. a trapper. He's a trapper. So and um. And apparently he's involved in some sh- in some shady shit. Mm-hmm. He's almost like um, kind of like if you were to blend Han Solo and Craven the Hunter together, like, and he's a trapper. Oh, I'm the weird. one that keeps hearing Safari Joe does it it's again. again. Yeah. yeah, he's not that much of a dick, but um, you know, he it's. It. <laughs> he it a lot. I did, I did. Um, they enjoyed it too. Sure, star sure. Um. <laughs> people that got that reference thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to give this a shot. There, there's a lot that's left open. Um, apparently, the the father gets involved in some super shady shit because all of a sudden they find. Well, they haven't found his brother mm-hmm. yet, but his brother's dead. Yeah, this has been shot, you know, and marked. But like, you know, this is what you mm-hmm. basically. It's like uh, sending a message to whoever he's involved with. But um, Grazzi sleeps with the fishes. Yeah, because it has like that, that smuggling undertone. Yeah, it's got like, a little I'll bit of get you what you want right. by the time you want it, and I just gotta go get it. Just don't right. ask any questions. Yeah, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So, forget about, about it. it. Forget Maybe. about it. How you doing? Um, but Peter Steigerwald, who was the colorist for Michael Turner when he was doing all the Fathom stuff, he's kind of the head mm-hmm. hot show. He's writing it and doing the artwork. The artwork is incredible. It is. He's just, he's that amazing. Boy girl. Well, say. yeah, again, I mean, <laughs> his, his style, he you know, yeah. every, the cabin boy girl. <laughs> well, shit, I mean, Or, was it the, uh, the main villain from Sleepaway Camp? <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh, dude, oh, come on! 
<laughs> Come on, Part one, two and three had so many great pairs of tits in it, and you gotta bring up the one fucking cock that was swinging in the breeze. God damn it, that was disturbing well, hey, on listen, so just, many levels. Listen, I'm just trying to bring up another situation where somebody gets drunk. That's it. No, it was you! <laughs> Sleepaway camp, part one. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Curly iron. Penny Dora and the Wishing Box. This could be a porno. <laughs> but it was a really cute story. You wish Wait, how do you go from a cute story and porno? I'm just saying the title's not the best. Like, listen. If I told you go on the computer yeah. and go on houseofjerky.net, do you think you should go on this site of work? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is a website where you can buy the most and delicious tiny Dora. <laughs> the most delicious jerky, fucking beef jerky, ham jerky, turkey jerky, snake fucking jerky, shark jerky, really? fucking venison jerky. All sorts of just delicious meat. Deliciousness sold by the pound, bro. There's a thing called the butcher, it's like two blocks down. Nah man, they don't get no venison. Houseofjerky.net, but I'm telling you. It sounds like a bad porn site. It really does. It really does. Penny Dora and the Wishing Box is a great story about this girl lives with her mother. The father is, you know, somewhere. Who the hell fucking knows? Mm -hmm. And she gets a mysterious package for Christmas. Opens it up. It's the last present she opens. And it's a random, like a little jewelry box kind of thing. Mm -hmm. A little wooden box. And she opens it up. Nothing happens. But when she's alone in her room late at night, end of Christmas... Uh, she opens it up and the box starts talking. It says, what do you wish for? What is your wish? Hmm. And it's whispering to her and she says, I wish Christmas wasn't over. All of a sudden, her mother yells to her and she's like, hey, there's more presents down here. You, got, you still got to open. She got everything you wanted. Oh, nice. Every kid's dream. Pretty much. <laughs> Every man's dream. And, you know, as with anything, that's the nice. moral of the story is probably going to be be careful what you wish for because mm -hmm. you just might get it. Mm -hmm. I am thoroughly anxious to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed this story. I liked it. If you have kids, if you if you want to get uh, your little girl into comics, this is absolutely the place to start. Penny Door in the Wishing Box. The, the artwork is really, really cute. It's very childish, mm -hmm. very cartoony. Awesome, awesome book. Was all, Would have been book of the week if not for... Uh, you know, everything that happened with ep with episode 35 and everything and Pirouette was just really, no, really yeah. sick. Yeah. I mean, we usually <clears throat> straight toward the darker side on the Peach Basement show, which is what we do. And just... <laughs> this is the happier side of Book of the Week. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> you, you owe it to yourself. And if you got kids or if you're like, if you're like a teacher and you want to get your students into reading, this is a good place to start, too. Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Especially little yeah. girls, you know, like there's, there's not a lot of a market for, you know, for girls, girls and comics, you know, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, short, Batgirl and everything. But some mm -hmm. of those, some of the themes in those books can be a little, you know, Heavy. adult. Right. A little, at the very least, PG-13. Yeah. This is not. This is totally PG. So far. So far. But I, I don't think they're going to go no, too I far. So either, yeah. I, I, I didn't read that. Definitely worth your time. Dead Island. Uh, tossed a quick look through this book. Um, it's based on the video game, obviously. I'm not too familiar with the game, but it's zombies. Yeah. You know. um, kind of interesting, but I don't know. I just it just didn't really grab me. The game didn't give me time. enough to to really. Yeah, I mean, it, it you know just seems to be like a you know the standard marketing ploy for to get awareness out there and, and all that stuff. Awareness of what zombieitis. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just like you know, it's just side promotion for for the video, for the video game. Yeah. I mean, now that they're they've had what two sequels out now? Da -da -da -da. So they're up to like two or three, something like that. I, I mean, got fucking zombie infested. I stopped paying hand. attention. No, oh, it's what's. <laughs> I stopped paying attention. You ever see Lucio right, right. Fulci's zombie? Who? Lucio Fulci's zombie. Because I'm tired. Yes. <laughs> Lucio, oh, Lucio Fulci, Fulci is, a, is one of the craziest Italian directors ever. He was a horror yeah. director. This guy was doing shit in the 80s that would take fucking the craziest CGI to pull off today. Really? Yeah. The dude, dude was a genius. There was Absolute a scene genius. with the zombies. First of all, he was the guy who said, oh, you can't just go to an island to be safe from the zombies. Because the zombies, 
Obviously, don't they breathe. They was walking water. under the water. One of the fucking zombies ate a shark. Zombies versus sharks. If you want to fucking know what happens, watch Lucio Fulci's zombies. Does Holy it, shit. Does a shark turn into a zombie? No. No, Why the shark not? doesn't make it that long. Hmm. Just saying. Okay. Also, they're cold-blooded. That is true. I mean, this guy is so fucking horrific and sick, and there's a scene where this woman is watching these couple of zombies through like a little peephole, a little crack in the door, right? And the zombies are eating somebody, and they say, oh, I see you. And this woman's like, oh no, she's like in a little crawl space, so the zombie punches through the fucking door, grabs her by the collar, and then very slowly pushes her toward a very profound splinter. In the door. Oh, nice. And let me tell you, if you watch that scene and you don't go, ah, ah, ah <laughs> so you are not human. In uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan, when the guy with the, the knife and he slowly just kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But so much but more in horrific the eye, than not jelly. Yeah. the chest. Yeah. yeah. That's. In the eye! And you watch it go in. Well, that's like the. Sick uh, shit. It's like the uh, Mortal Kombat X uh, fatality preview with uh, Quan Chi. Oh god. <laughs> that was fucked up. That was seriously oh. fucked up. Guandi? <laughs> Guandi. You know what that's Call from. me! My name is Bruce. If you've never seen this, you need to. <laughs> oh, the one about... Um, Bruce Campbell. Have you guys seen My Name is Bruce? I, have, I actually have not this seen it. This is one of the best movies. There's a little town that's being haunted by this ancient Chinese ghost and they go get Bruce Campbell because they've seen Army of Darkness. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Have you heard? What? <laughs> Army of Stars picked up uh, Army of Darkness. Really? Yeah. With Campbell. Yeah. With Ash. And Raimi's directing the first episode. Really? Yeah. Yep. I'm intrigued. Mm -hmm. I think he's a bit old to play Ash. Little, little, whatever. Little, whatever. Hey, fine. you know what? It's going to be fine. Listen. If you're good at something, keep doing it. Exactly. And Stars is not shy about sex and shit. Hold on. No, Any more questions? We got plenty of questions. Actually, no, we don't. We don't? We don't? No. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Levang wants to know what does everything end means? Because um, what does this mean? You think Marvel headed for a new 52 reboot? What's your thoughts? I sincerely hope not. I hope they're smart enough to realize that DC is going to fuck up their new 52 and have to go back come April, so Marvel would just be like, uh, let's just do an event that doesn't mean anything. I'm going with, I think that they're going to try to do what the new 52 did, but like where they try to clean up and get rid of the shit that doesn't matter and keep the stuff that does. I don't think it's going to be like a, a let's full universal reboot. reboot and go back to like, <clears throat> here's the origin of Spider-Man, here's the origin of the X-Men. Right. I don't think we're going to go back to that. But I think we're going to get where it's going to be like, you know, like a zero hour or something where it just fucking wipes everything clean and it's like, all right, let's start close. Let's start over. I'm almost okay with erasing Gwen Stacy's kids. <laughs> <laughs> there are things in Marvel that do Come need on. cleaning. Why is that not on the, the, the list of events that they're revisiting? Because no one wants to talk about no, it. No, I know. <laughs> it, just, yeah. it belongs in the blimps of obscurity. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it's an opportunity for them to go to go back to Steve Rogers being Cap, Thor being male again, right. you know, and and all that other stuff to coincide with the Avenger, the Avengers film and all the films that are coming out after. Um, I don't think it's going to be a, f a completely full blown reboot. They'd be I, stupid I, to do it. Dumb. Yeah, they would be really stupid to do so it. So how about all the shit they're doing right now? Is it not going to last long then? Honestly, at this point, I think that if they if they had this intention of you know, we'll fix whatever doesn't work. Mm -hmm. At this point, they're just playing. So, superior Iron Man, female Thor. Whatever the fuck, let's just throw it out there. Falcon America. It's like a dirty pair of underwear. Throw it against the wall. If it sticks, it sticks. If it doesn't, wear it again. What you do with uh, the privacy of your home. I ain't touching that one. You'll lose that star. Aw, <laughs> I liked my star. That's a demerit. Damn yeah. it. Hold on, since we're talking movies and stuff. So. Hi. Mikey Hi. Sutton, our homie, wants to know two things. Yeah. How would you feel if Sony did decide to adapt the Clone Saga for the Spider-Man movies? I will go to Sony theaters. I will barricade the doors and myself inside. Hold on. What? Hold on. Did you read the ultimate version of the Clone Saga? Yes. What'd you think of it? Gwen Stacy is still a clone now, and nobody seems to give a shit. 
Well, she's a clone of Carnage. Oh, she yeah. Is. yeah, she's yeah. a clone of Carnage. Yeah, yeah and the fact that um, Spider Girl, Jessica Drew, is a clone of Peter Parker. Which I actually like. That's her awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love her character. That's yeah, her character is awesome. But my point is, is more, it, it can be done well. Properly. And if you j- if they just don't fucking run with it the way that that that, that yeah. story just fucking took off, I don't, I don't think the public at large is ready for a clone saga. I don't know. I think I'd be curious. I don't. I'm not. I, I would make them. I would make every Sony executive sit down and watch. And I would read them the clone saga. I would have more faith. <laughs> <laughs> You would have to do that with like a wine glass and like a little pipe sitting over a fireplace. In yes. my robe. In my yes. red In robe and nothing else. It's like, welcome to Master Cheese Theater. It would be Master Pete Theater. I would read them the Clone Saga Pete. issue <laughs> after issue. No one's going home. It is effectively a hostage situation. I'm not threatening anyone's life, but no one's allowed to leave. If, if you leave, I'm going to follow you home and then I'm going to read it to your family. <laughs> If Marvel Studios no one wants would. to put their kids through that. Hold on, wait, what, what about you? Um, oh god. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually very thankful that I missed out on the Clone Saga. Because that was, like, that was in the gap that I had b- between. So, thankfully I've never read it. And, you know, so I'm kind of slightly open to the idea that if it's done properly, it might work. But... Uh, part it of requires, is just like no. Here's my other thing. It requires a lot of setup. That would be something you would have to right. set up in like an earlier two movie movies before and, at least. And, right. That's um, my point. and the problem, the problem with that is, is that Sony has no fucking patience they, to set up. They they Marvel Studios was doing it. They don't have the patience to oh, set it up. I still because you're bitter. I know I am. See? Sony doesn't have the patience but. to set it up. Number one. Number two. I have a feeling that you know. I mean, because of how bad. The second Amazing Spider-Man film was. It still did well in the box office, but it was That's a it's badly true. written yeah. movie. Oh, it was um, terrible. You know, I, I have a feeling they're going to lose clout with Spider-Man and eventually probably lose the franchise if they try they're to do so. It, they're going to sell it back to Marvel movie. for you know whatever. Eventually, it's going to happen. Phenomenal feat. Right, right. Ghost Fleet. This shit was like there's something crazy Weird. about the truck, like whatever the truck is hauling. Yep. And these people try to rob the truck in like some Fast and the Furious kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. And then everybody's like, oh no, we're under attack, what are we going to do? Oh yeah, the fucking Goliath super truck that we could just ride that out of town. Right. And so then they jump in the truck. Run everybody. Yeah. And that's all that happened in the first issue. That's it? That's it. Just about well, it. yeah, but you know, I mean, spoiler alert, the, the, what's in the truck got out. Whatever the fuck it was, yeah. But you don't, don't know. We don't know. You don't. You don't see it. All, all you see is the the group of Gotta come back the group of too. guys and like was uh, was attacking them. They're all dead. And one of the dudes who kind of knew what was going on shoots his friend mm-hmm. because right. of it. But it doesn't kill him. No. It doesn't kill him. Spoiler alert. Like he blows his fucking head off, but sorry. not. Mm. And then leaves them with a note that says, I'm, I'm kind of sorry and shit. What? It, it, yeah, yeah, it's implied. He's probably setting them up to... It's like, a bit of a listen, struggle to get through. Do. Yeah. And I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Yeah. Not it excited. doesn't sound like this story. It doesn't it just sounds... cockamamie. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all over the place. You're stretching. Yeah. You want to read a good <clears throat> fucking crazy truck story? Go read that Joe Hill shit. Yes. Fuck, you remember uh-huh. that? Yeah. Uh, Fuck. Road something. Yeah. Road kill. Road kill. That was it. Roadhouse. I don't remember if I Roadhouse. mentioned this last time, because I, I don't think I was started this yet. I, you you said to start reading Fire and uh, Fire and Stone. What'd you think? Oh my fucking god! I told you. Holy shit! I'm. I'm There's just like nine different segments to it. I know. There's but aliens, still. Prometheus, aliens versus Predator. But I love how everything is connected. Yeah. yeah. Like read oh. all the tools and wait for all the things to come up and read them all. Yeah, yeah. you gotta read everything yeah. fucking together. Oh my, like. Did not like Prometheus, but I like what it's what they're doing with the, the way story. it connects everything mm-hmm. else. Yes, our work's good too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I you're talking say. Prometheus like the film? Yeah. The film this is what the film should have been and wasn't. Yeah. Right. Everything that you should have gotten from the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I know that they cut a lot of that stuff out. Yeah. Rasputin issue one. This is not a lot going on in this one. Uh, if you know about Rasputin, we do. which I mean, if you've ever seen Hellboy. A lot of that was true, except for the whole, you know, come back from the dead and 
you know, worship the elephants oh, kind right of here. thing. Okay. Yeah, that guy. Your lips are moving. But he actually was uh, beaten, Stand tortured, right. stabbed, poisoned, poisoned, shot, drowned, and the motherfucker would not die. Yeah. Was he Vigo the Carpathian? No, he would not die. <laughs> no, 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 pictures. And finally, like, they Vigo. threw him in the icy river, and nobody was found. So, he's draw your own fucking conclusions. You are like the buzzing of flies to him. But all in all, this was just a setup book. And yeah, but I've had I don't think it was that good of a setup book for him. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get it. All it shows is like he had an abusive father. That's it. And his father's ghost uh, is still haunting him. And he's he, got he, daddy he, issues. He you know, hold on, hold on. Which kind of explains a lot. Because yeah, because he, he's yeah. like he's amongst his friends and he's like the wine is poisoned. It's a bad Russian accent, I'm sorry. Yeah. Stop giving people, like, stop giving a character, some, like, yeah, sometimes you need a reason and a rationale as for why you have, like, a certain character a certain way. But if you got somebody like Rex Butin, just let the motherfucker be evil. Hmm? For fucking evil sake. Hmm. Stop trying to give him, oh, he was beaten as a father, his mother was a stripper. Everybody's, and, yeah, every, you know, everybody's trying to portray. And beat him senseless. Hmm? It's like, oh, fucking come Don't on, Don't portray man. him as an anti-hero, portray yeah. him as a mean son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 For no it. good fucking yeah. reason. Right. You know, Some people are evil. Under. People don't want to admit that evil actually exists. What made the first, what made the first Halloween so great? The original Halloween. Because there was no evil. fucking reason that he was nuts. He just snapped and killed his fucking family. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know about that one. Now my family's still I'm gonna alive, pick up though. issue two. Yeah, you're an only child. <laughs> because <laughs> I, 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 I'm true. one of seven. How? Oh my god. Yeah. Holy vagina! What is not a clown car, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm living up to this big myth. Dude, you know what? That, that, ex that, that explains a lot, Ronald. Yeah, yeah. That explains a lot. Um, Got a question? Yeah, um, Sutton's other question was, what are our thoughts on Jared Leto playing the Joker in the Suicide Squad movie? I'm all, I love it. I like the idea of him playing him. He's just twisted enough to pull it off. I yeah. don't want the Joker in the Suicide Squad. I agree. I, I can, Unless it's for like a quick it. cameo, maybe? With Harley, that's it? Yeah. Don't make him a prominent part. That in like a little flashback scene. Yeah, fine. How she ended up in jail. Yeah, and, sure. Okay. But not like him like as part of the suicide. He's part. not a team player. No. No, no. he can't be part don't of the suicide. Try squad. it. Don't even attempt it. Amanda Waller's not stupid enough to even fucking try it. Damn right. That's that's a really, character for her. Listen, yes. I, it, and it, she's a badass cunt. She, to to me, be a badass to me the only reason why he would join he would want to join the suicide squad would be because he wants to kill them. Yeah, that's it. And just you know, and everyone else. Right. Or he's gonna get. Yeah, right. He's got to get something out of joining it. Oh yeah. Like he's got some type of ulterior motive. Yeah. And he's Spe going to fuck him over. Speaking with. of Suicide Squad, it has to be Fat Amanda Waller. I agree. As much as I love Arrow's Amanda Waller, who's fucking fine. Right. I'll give her my arrow. Ah! <laughs> he shoots. He scores. I need Fat Amanda Waller. I agree. From the no. cartoon. Yeah. From the comic books, it's just. Stays it's with. just so much easier for her to be a bitch if yeah, she's fat. Fat bitch! <laughs> from fat. Hey, it's a slot. <laughs> um, Hot kettle black. There ooh, you go. Okay. What well, last question? Sure. Josh Lilo Krieger wants to know guilty pleasure comic. Oh, well, I know yours. I'm gonna go something different this time. Really? You guys, yeah, I wanna try, because I always answer with the same thing. Don't so I want for you. Yeah, but I wanna go something different this time. Okay. So you guys answer and I'll come back to it. Let me mm. think about this a second. I, I actually need some time to think about this. because Ramon? Shit. Right now, it's actually Princess Ugg. Princess Ugg is awesome. It is awesome. It really is. But it's almost like, just a dirty little secret. So this is like a princess going kind of to like a, well, a princess training camp. Is this going to be the new My Little Pony for guys? It should be. <laughs> Dude, I was in Midtown Comics when before the first, uh, the first issue of the, the fucking My Little Pony comic came out. These two guys come walking up and they're like fighting over who's gonna go up to the guy behind the counter and ask if the comic had come out yet. And he's like, no, you ask him, man. No, come on, man. You oh ask him. Oh my you god, ask it's hilarious. Trish and I turn and we look at each other and we're like, what the fuck are these idiots doing? They go up there and it's like, excuse me, is the new My Little Pony out yet? And it was like, because oh everything in Midtown isn't just in alphabetical order on the show. You can never on the show. <laughs> and not be embarrassed by your own question. Uh, Not that I give a fuck. I'd be like, yo, is my little pony out yet? Because I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, yo, what's for my niece? Say exactly. some shit. It's for me, what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> come come, come like, out. Yeah, me, that's bro. for me. Come at me. What? 
My guilty pleasure used to be X, but now X is badass again, so I guess I'm going back to Shadowhawk. <laughs> well, when's the last time Shadowhawk came out? I don't fucking know. So there you go. What, you what, know what? Right I, now? My guilty pleasure comic now? Yeah. Oh, damn. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> I might my, have to get back to you next week, though. Mine, mine was Cyber Force. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. The Sylvester Brothers. I think I'm gonna have to go uh, go back to my old one of my other old faithfuls, uh, Vigilante, the old DC character. Shit. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a fun book, and then they they started doing something with that when they relaunched a couple of years ago. But I even I gave up on that. It was so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I was like, I love it, man, but like, I have no idea where the fuck you're going with this. So, <laughs> goodbye. It's a sad God Killer from Black Mask. Issue one come out. Now this is one of those books. That looks like a PS1. It's <laughs> very strange. Uh, the beginning is like very weird and kind of poorly photoshopped together. It looks, yeah, like a, it looks like a PlayStation 1 game. But I think it's done all together on purpose. I think it's supposed to be just a hodgepodge of shit thrown in. And the book itself is like this post-apocalyptic world where Little hookers are sewing themselves together and shit, mm-hmm. and there's this doctor that's harvesting organs for people because the organs run out of use. Yeah. Like, it's very, it's a very dark, fucked up story. Yeah. I like it. It's just, it's very weird. It carries weird in the comic because, honestly, there are parts of it that are not artistically put forth well, and then, then you get panels like this that are, like, really fucking cool, and you get the idea... And everything, like... But you know what kills me with some of the panels in here, especially towards the end? And I'm really getting sick and tired of some artists doing this. They skimp on the backgrounds. Right. Oh, God, yeah. And this book suffers from that in the worst way, where it's like... Well, there's a reason behind it, and... Well, I think there's a reason behind it, but we've been... We were discussing this before we started filming. We found out that they're going to turn this into an anime? It is going to be a animated. three-part animated feature. Right. And it reads more like a storyboard than a comic book. So why am I spending four dollars on a storyboard? Well. Do you know who, looking at that artwork, you know who would be fucking awesome? The guy who did uh, the animation studio that did uh, Aeon Flux and Alexander. Yeah. Yeah, they would be fucking awesome based Absolutely. off of that. But and and but they also did did it in that similar style. It's an anime esque type of style where they don't do a lot of the backgrounds. Right, and backgrounds will fade and come in and out of focus. And it's gonna be a lot of fucking crazy, crazy like you know just effects going on with like flames and you get these like. like you know, apocalyptic kind of scenes and factories and everything, and right. you know, people being kidnapped and cut dank, open in the dank, dark interiors that's in just perpetually covered in a haze. This is a smoke fucked and, up book and that is it's fumes. worth your time. But I like I I'm really more anxious to see the anime version right. than I am yeah. the book. Like I, I was gonna say, would you go back for the issue two for that? I would just because I, I want to see what happens, but like I don't want issue two to ruin the anime. Like I almost want to be surprised more in the anime to watch it, but I don't know how how long it's gonna take before it comes out. You know? Right. Honestly, I don't know if I could go back for issue two. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't fuck with issue one. <laughs> not me. Sorry. I, I like the sketchiness of a lot of the panels and everything. I, I like the I, I like the fucking concept of the story. Right. It just, yeah, like, there, yeah. was, there are some points where it's Best difficult to push yeah. through. <laughs> I'll agree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but like no, the, I, you know, the fucked up doctor and everything, and the little girl, it's right. it's up there. It's weird. Black Mask it does some really fucking weird shit. Yeah, I give you that much. Yeah. We talked about yeah. I was bombed off my ass. Uh, uh, no, you? Stop yeah, no. I mean, this we reviewed this like later on in the show. It was fucking wrecked. We finished a whole bottle of whiskey. We we talked. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me under the bus, why don't you? <laughs> Last born one and critical hit one. Now we have part two, which actually opens up the story of Last Born a little bit more. And you come to in the last one, we saw this girl's father go through this cave, and he sees this weird other world, everybody's dead around him and shit, and it kind of warps his head. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and shit like that might be prone to do. Yeah. So now she winds up running away from her fiance because she didn't want to get married. And she runs into the same cave that her father did so many years ago, which left him basically a vegetable. Because, all right, fuck it. I want to get in touch. I want to know what happened to my father. So I'm going to run through the cave, too. And it's like a cosmic wormhole. It propels her into the future. We don't know it's the future until this issue, yeah. when some other dude from further into the future, I think, or yes. maybe he's from, like, this is really far into the future, and, like, he's from a, a point somewhere in between. In between, in between and I'm not totally following. clear on that yet, yeah. but his future is all fucked up. Because there's some alien race that, like, a, a brood kind of thing that comes to Earth and kills and assimilates everybody. Yeah. Like, with this, like, body snatchers kind of mindset. And so he has the ingredients of the primordial ooze to find the pool of life and kind of pour this little test tube back in and restart Earth and beat this alien creature. It's a fucking crazy ass story. Yep. To throw together into two issues so far. Sounds like they're trying to cram too much into two issues. Well, we don't know how long it's oh, going, uh, but I'm, I'm glad that they're advancing the plot fast enough that I don't have to fucking keep wondering through five issues mm. if I actually like the story yet. So, not like a Bendis book? It's not a Bendis book by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> yeah, you they can't... actually explain you shit. The funny thing is, with a lot, with a lot of Bendis' stuff, you can't, you can't tell whether or not you like it until about three issues after it's done. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> So I, I would definitely, I'm enjoying Last Born a lot more. I want to see what happens with this whole future society. On the other hand, these cunts in Critical Hit. <laughs> oh, how do you really feel? I'm rooting for what appears to be the bad guys in this movie. In That's this good. Yeah. Fucking book. Basically, they are these animal rights activist girls. Yeah. I'm all for that. You want to fucking save the animals from... You know, experiment, being experimented on and shit, fine. Yeah, I get that. They're the extreme kind. They're entirely too extreme. Oh, yeah. And they're fucking up these hunters' hunt. All they want to do is get some fucking charred meat, put it together with some A1 steak sauce or some ketchup or whatever have you, and eat. At least that's the way it appears. Yeah. And they proceed to burn down these guys' cabins, mm -hmm. fuck up the hunt their completely, trucks. like, and then they get caught... And, and he's, he beat the shit out of Yeah. I can't say they didn't kind of deserve it. Mm. I'm just saying. They kind of get deserved it. I don't really, I'm not rooting for them. Just throwing it out there. And you get these one, this one dude who's kind of sympathetic to the white. Always a puss in the group. He's like, this is your best chance to escape. Go now. Yeah, like, shut the fuck up, dude. You just got your cabin burned down, your car blew up, and you have no deer meat. But he wants to get with him. Probably does. He thinks he's going to get his dicks fucking wet. Mm -hmm. yeah, some men will do anything with that. Sucks. I'm still reading this because I want to know what happens. I want them to convince me that these girls are worth saving. Because well, so far I'm not convinced. In comparison to God Killer, it actually has backgrounds. That is true. Yeah. There's actually quite a number of backgrounds, so I'm kind of whoever it's not, the artist. It's not badly drawn at all. It's no, actually, nice. the, the backgrounds are good and everything. Very nice. Jonathan Sawyer, not bad. Good job. I don't like these girls. Don't. I don't. I'm not rooting for them. I am a carnivore. I like meat. I like to go to fucking a steakhouse. Yes. And sit there with a steak for two for me. Mm -hmm. Medium rare, bleeding, bleed, bleed the fuck out of my steak. Chase that fucking cow around the kitchen with a match and it's done. If it doesn't move at you, <laughs> exactly. It's not fire. It's fucking. That's all been done. Seriously. Gotcha. Um, I, you know, I get. I totally get. It. Only I've only read this issue for Critical Hit, so I didn't read the first one. So I get. I get what you're saying. I think what they're trying to do in this issue is get you to endear yourselves to these two characters because they go in and find a place where they were uh, torturing and beating up dog-fighting dogs. You know, right. Robert but that was a totally separate place than these hunters. No, oh, no, of course. It's a flashback, right? right. So, But that's 
that's kind of like that mentality. But it's like, okay, and I'm all totally for that. Right, totally understandable. But if you're gonna go fuck up somebody's hunt when they have every right to do so, right, then you cross the line. You deserve to get your ass. Like you, you know, you're showing me good things about these characters that I would like because right. you know dogs should not be fighting. They you know save the dogs. Absolutely right. burn this fucking place to the ground. Right. That's you know condoning this shit. That should never fucking happen. I right. love dogs. And, you know, like, you want to fucking burn down a, a, a clinic of some kind where they're abusing animals, fine. But you, you're going to go and fuck up these guys a rightful hunt where, you know, they're not fucking, like, cutting the deer's legs off while the thing is, like, flailing about. Right, and they're not going to be the they're type... They're not torturing and, and, them, at least right. not, to my knowledge, yet. Right, and if they're not the type of guys who are going to do the whole trophy taxidermy type of fucking thing... You right. Know, that's, then, you know, and that's I'm fine. not registering that yet, maybe later on if I see that, where... You know, they've got the whole fucking deer mounted and stuffed as opposed well, to you can't eat the fucking head. In this issue, you see that they bring them to a specific little, like, trailer. Right, they've got their, right, they've got their like, own little like, torture chamber. Yeah, torture yeah. chamber. So it's well, like, I mean, but, maybe you had one of those and then you never know if it's going to come in handy. I don't know. Yeah, basically, this, this book, there is a shitload of gray area. There's mm -hmm. too much. Yeah, there's way too much. I have to keep reading it because I want to fucking know what's going on. Right. But I'm I'm not rooting for these girls yet. Right. The, a lot of a lot of these books and a, a lot of different characters and like like you were saying about the whole Rasputin thing, they're all they're I think too many comic book companies are too focused on trying to create the anti-hero mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and not Let just straight up hero villain. Have at it. Let's see what happens. Right. You know? So. Anti-heroes tend to come about because people just like Love villains. Them. Yeah. Then that's right. all. Going back to Heroes, the TV show, think about uh, Silo. Right, right. He was a great he was villain. A, he was the best character on the show because yeah. of, you know. Even look at Deadpool. I mean, he was just a fucking whack job of an assassin. And people were like, yo, he's awesome. Yeah. All of a sudden. And I mean, it, it, the guy's been out for like 20 years and his popularity has only been in the it past five brain. to... Like, not even ten. Five to seven years, maybe, yeah. or so? You yeah, think? I don't remember him being that zany, sarcastic... In the early 90s. Did in the early not and first and I mean, not the early 90s, the early 2000s and shit. Right. Wasn't... wasn't well, there. I mean, like, when he... Like, in the first series, um, I mean, they talk about how, like, that, that book was always on the chopping block. So it was basically right. like, they never knew when they were going to be... It was going to be canceled. Right. So it was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just write the most zany shit that we could possibly throw in there right. and just see where the fuck happens. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, just kind of took off with it. But it wasn't like, all right, let's do this because we need a character that's going to be like this. It was basically like, shit, let's see what the fuck we can get away with. Right. Yeah. And that's how you win. Yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of Deadpool, though, I mean, I was hearing rumors that, um, that they're going to bring back Deadpool in one of the Marvel movies and Ryan Reynolds is going to reprise the role. Well, he is on the contract, too. He's got no, you know. Well, fair enough. Well, did you see the, the the little like raw footage? Of him? Wait, what no. Marvel movie you mean? You gotta see that. Right? It means Fox. Fox. Okay, Fox. Oh, Fox. Fox. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Watch that. Watch. Are you just looking up pictures of Ivy in the meantime? A bunch of cop players. Uh huh. Yeah. Watch the raw footage of tits. Um, Ryan Reynolds voicing over a Deadpool um, CGI sequence. Yeah, that was good. It was okay. actually, it's actually like I was even I was on the fence with Ryan Reynolds. Right. And then all of a sudden I saw that and I was kind of like. Kind of nailed it, man. <laughs> no, he's, he's good he, as he knows. He's a good comedian. Ryan, the Ryan Reynolds I mean, knows how to be a like super annoying asshole. Who didn't like it? Who didn't like it? He knows how to be a super annoying asshole. I'm sorry, yeah. but the guy fucking shit in his brain out into Jordan, things though. like I I'm bleeding. I no, cried. Yeah. It. Cried. Van Wilder was a hilarious movie. That's a funny fucking film. But you can't apply that to Green Lantern. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, God. Fiction Squad issue two. Adorable. You awesome. need to read this. Holy you absolutely need to. From Boom Studios. It it's like Columbo meets fucking nursery rhymes. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Everything if anybody, if anybody out there remembers the thing that when I was looking through this it reminded me of lullabies back in like two thousand three, two, four, somewhere around there. I don't remember when the hell it was. Image book. Fucking if you love that shit, you will love this stuff. Oh my god. It is so friggin' good, man. Really smart, really intelligently written, um, you know, injecting all the different classics, you know, um, what should we call it? 2005. Uh, oh, well, there you go. Um, 
<clears throat> Every nursery like, rhyme you, you can think of. It's right, like, yeah, yeah. You know, you, Alice they, in Wonderland, Humpty Dumpty, fucking Little Miss Muffet, everybody. Right. And they're all in the fucking police station, and this one, uh, this one chick is talking to the dog, and she hollers over to two officers. She says, "Hey, knickknack, Patty White, give this dog a bone." <laughs> Yo, and like, really? <laughs> it's fucking awesome. You, you got the wicked witches of the east, west, north, and south versus the the evil wicked queens, and it's right. like a mafia kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, it's great. It's just yeah. everything it's about this really is great. great. It's really well thought out. Yeah. And then just, you know, like we talked about how Ghost Rider, it doesn't, the, the, the um, artwork of Ghost Rider doesn't match. The this artwork, artwork matches. is perfect. Perfect. It's yeah. like perfect marriage. Yeah. I couldn't imagine a different artist. No. Like, no. It's so cute. It works. It's, it's just everything right. about this book, you need to be reading yeah. it. It's good. And, it's and, the funny, and the funny, the best thing about this, I think, is that all of your, most of your leading ladies, your Alice in Wonderland, your Dorothy, they're all evil. They're all evil. But they're all evil gangs. We have their own hit squad. How evil are they? They're quasi <laughs> evil. Quasi. They're a diet coke of evil. One calorie, not even enough. No. And it helps in the six issues, too. Yeah. So, do you guys oh, know that yeah. the Pete's Basement show was featured in a documentary recently? No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, this guy, Sean Harbin, that we reviewed his work. Uh, several years ago, back when uh, the lovely Amber Love was on the show, oh, yeah. this guy's work uh, kind of looks like a cross between Scooby Doo meets J. Scott Campbell. Nice. His that's his cartoony stuff. He also does like really realistic work, but he does this book called The Dungeon, which he's been doing for the last six years. It's like a nine issue thing. Uh, the reason it's taking six years is because he draws it, writes it, fucking colors it, inks it. All the work is done, done by him. on his own. So he's not pulling the Joe Matarero? Not in the slightest. Okay. <laughs> Everything is done by him, uh, and there's now a Kickstarter campaign to do a documentary on all the effort that it has taken him to, to put this shit together. That's cool. And it's honestly one of the craziest books. It's like an adult version of Lord of the Rings, if you will. Like It's very, you know, adult thing. There's a lot of girls with big tits running around. I mean, you can't beat that. You're more adult than Game like, of Thrones? Lord of the Rings meets Game of Thrones meets Conan meets... Yeah! Meets fucking Scooby Doo's artwork. So, like, imagine <laughs> fucking Daphne's just running around with fucking giant tits. It's awesome. Okay. Check them out bsx22studios.com. Oh, man. Drop them a line and say you saw it on the Peach Basement show. Check them out, guys. I guarantee you won't go wrong. It's fucking awesome shit. It really is. And it, he's putting together, like, one big ass graphic novel, but it, he's produced, like, these. 64 page books just on his own. Nice. Like That's awesome. That is no easy task. So anybody pages. that has had a project in art class to do where you decide, let me just draw a comic book, and you got one page in and it's been fucking a month and a half, and you're like, God damn it. You know how long did it take us to do that tone book? Holy mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, I gotta kind of find out where that is. Yeah, I would be curious to know what. Yeah, I'd like to know what has happened to that. Yeah. You, we got to hold of like the yeah. beginning pages. Yeah. I am very curious. We got some more questions? No. No? No. I guess that's it then. Yeah. Guys, Sweet. thanks for tuning in to Peach Basement Extras. We hope you have been thoroughly entertained. We know this has been a pretty crazy episode. Pete, Rich, thanks for coming. You got it. Guys, don't forget to check out our he doesn't thank Peach you, Basement. Though. He's always here. <laughs> <laughs> Our no shave November post. Uh, we're asking. I'm you. just starting to get itchy as fuck right now. Are you? Yeah, like Lots right now is the itchy. You get the Lane Stanley thing going, man. Yeah, I'm gonna try to. We're asking you guys to donate to a point. One dollar to cancer research through our post. So click on it. Go to peachbasement.com and then you can find the link that'll take you to the American Cancer Association, the Heart Foundation, uh, the American Cancer Society, the Heart Foundation. Give oh me Amber Lightheart. Mm -hmm. Guys, one dollar is all it's gonna take Crazy. from you. You spend more than that on a soda or even a candy bar. One dollar to cancer research for a good cause. So help raise the old Peach Basement crew team up there. And like I said, if you want to join the team, just uh, hit us up, questions at peachbasement.com. Send us a picture of yourself and where your current beard status is. And we will happily have you join the team. We'll throw you up on peachbasement.com website. We'll have the whole meet the team, little bio and everything. Do you want in? I mean, you kind of got this going as it is. So. There we go. All right. Richard's in. He's in.
So do you want to be in? <clears throat> Hit us up, guys. Questions at peachbasement.com. Facebook.com forward slash Peach Basement. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Peach Basement. And we'll see you next week. There's only one problem. What's that? By the time November comes, I will seriously be like... That's fine. <laughs> That's the whole point. Yeah, no. no shade November. you got to explain that to my wife. I will explain it to your wife. <laughs> you should take pictures of us like, you know, getting your shave done. Very hey. interesting. <laughs> that Kids. motherfucker Kids. comes at me now, I'm like... <laughs> bitch. Have you read this? Yep. No, this man, kind of he kills the baby. Throws it in a swamp. Yeah, it is. Car seat and all. Yeah, dude. Wow. wow. It was awesome. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> that says a lot about your character, Ramon. Yes. I'm going to edit this shit all tonight. Somebody says. Have so ha- come inside, maybe for one second. Ha- have, fun, have fun going to bed at 4 in the morning. Oh, with the tits? Yeah. Sure. One of the groups on. Yeah. It's a, little, it's a little on the big side, but she's got a nice hat, dude. Real women have curves, son. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Did you see that picture of Ivy that I put up on the show? Oh, my God. Ivy, dude. <sighs> Seriously, like, my dick hit me in the mouth. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yo, did, you, <laughs> exactly. did you see the comment from Diego? Yes. With a three-tiered fucking butter yeah. I've, 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 I have oh. that. I have that. Oh, actually. that's hilarious. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Guys, if you have no concept of what we're talking about, you need to go on to Peach Basement Facebook and just scroll through because I shared a picture of Ivy Doom Kitty that is absolutely to die for. And this is how we're starting the show. This, yeah, this is, is how we're starting the show. Start show with, yeah, how that Ivy is the one. Are. That is the one. Since oh, I like you guys oh, oh, oh. and I am editing this raw, what was going to be raw footage, I'll just pop this <laughs> up right in front so you guys can stare at it for a moment. Let's all just take and a moment. And there it went. Let's yeah. take, no, it's still there. Let's take a moment. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm right. doing Kenny. All so right. Cheap. Pick your fucking pants up, take your hands, and put them on the keyboard. I want both hands to count before, before we start the show. Be good. God, I hope this was recorded the entire thing. Oh, I, I thought.